Hey everybody and welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. I am Captain Jack and in this episode we are going to be talking about the Big Reactors mod by Herogenous Beef. <laughs> Alright, let's get started. One of the first things you might notice about this mod is that it adds um, some ore generation into your world, and that is Yellowrite ore. You can see that it's from the Big Reactors mod by the tooltip on the top. And what you're going to do with this Yellowrite ore is you are going to throw it in some sort of pulverizer, macerator, whatever machine you use to turn your ores into dust. You're going to throw it into a pulverizer, so I'll drop a little bit of Yellowrite into there. We're going to make some Yellorium dust, okay? Once you have the Eulorium dust, you're going to go ahead and smush it in a redstone furnace or any other kind of furnace that you may have to make Eulorium ingots. You can use nine ingots to make a block of Eulorium. This is going to be the fuel and some of the uh, crafting components for the rest of the pieces here. What you'll also need to get started with this mod is you're going to need some graphite bars. And in order to make them, you just simply take some coal, throw it in a redstone furnace, and get some graphite bars. You can use nine graphite bars to make a block just like this. Now, before we go any farther, there is um, an important distinction that we need to make between two different types of reactors that this mod adds into your game. The first is a passively cooled reactor. And before you can even make an actively cooled reactor, which is the second of the two, you have to have been running a passively cooled reactor for a little while. And uh, I'll tell you why when we get to the actively cooled reactor. But in order to make a basic uh, reactor, you're going to have to start out with these components. Now, it's going to seem like a lot, but don't worry. A lot of the recipes are fairly similar. I'm not really going to show you all of them. Um, you just need some of these graphite bars here to make four reactor casings to make some reactor glass. It's two pieces of glass next to a reactor casing. Um, the controller is going to take a diamond, um, two eulorium ingots, and a redstone and four blocks of uh, casing there. So uh, fairly simple stuff, not too complicated. Um, but this is what you're going to need to start off um, with making your first reactor. So we have a casing, we have glass, we have the controller, um, which is uh, the main piece of your reactor. We have an access point, which can uh, be changed between an outlet mode and inlet mode, and you can see that the color change is there. So uh, don't be confused if you're looking at somebody else's tutorial, maybe you're looking online. Um, these are the same blocks, you can just change the color between inlet and outlet, and that's called an access port. The power tap it's what's, is what's going to um, basically funnel the power out of the reactor and into uh, whatever type of power storage that you may choose to have. The Elorium fuel rod is where the fuel is stored inside the reactor, and we can actually see an active graphic of this once it's inside of your reactor. And finally, we have a control rod, which must be placed on the very top of your Elorium fuel rods. So let's go ahead and real quick, let's put one of these things together. We're just going to make a 5x5, five five, and I'll show you how to, uh, to make one real quick. All right, so when building your reactor, there's a few things that you're going to have to keep in mind. First of all, is that the outside shell of the reactor always has to be made out of casings. It cannot be made out of glass or any other type of block. So that's number one. Number two is it has to have a controller, a eulorium fuel rod, and a uh, reactor control rod to um, complete the multi-block. So let's go ahead and make, make this side glass. We'll make this side glass too. Why not? And let's go ahead and just make this out of casing just to uh, show you that they are, in fact, interchangeable. Okay, and I'll go ahead and throw some, uh, some glass here on top. Now, the Eulorium fuel rod, I believe, can go anywhere inside the reactor, but uh, if you want to cool the whole thing properly, let's go ahead and put it in the middle and then put a control rod on top. And the Eulorium fuel rod needs to extend the length of your reactor and always with that control rod on top. Now we're going to go ahead and add a reactor controller and it's going to complete the multi-block. If this was not complete and you uh, right click it I believe with with your hand it will tell you that it requires at least one controller. So it will tell you what you're missing. So we're going to add that controller and we're going to build a reactor. Okay? There's a lot going on inside this reactor but that's basically how you build one. Alright, so now let's talk a little bit more about the passively cooled reactor and all these parts that can go into it. What I have here is, is basically the smallest reactor that, that you can build as a controller. It has an access port here for outlet and an access port here for inlet. We have a power tap here to uh, get the power out of the reactor and on the very top we have a reactor control rod. Um, let's go over these access ports really quick. The access ports are basically what take in and push out fuel. Eulorium goes here if you are an import or an uh, 
an access port that was set to inlet mode. So we have our Eulorium here, and I have 50 ingots here. And you can change between eject fuel, which will knock out all the fuel and move that over to the side. Or you can eject waste, and that'll eject any waste that is in um, this side over here. And that will only be in the outlet mode um, of the other port that I have on the other side. And you can flip between the two here, which will change the color of the outside. Okay, these are pretty simple. That's where you put your fuel. There we go. We have cyanite, and that's the uh, waste that's produced by these reactors, and that's in outlet mode. And uh, if we were to had, if we were to have uh, some kind of um, item duct or applied energistics or some side, some sort of um, item pipe hooked up to this, we would be able to automatically um, shove these out of the reactor. Okay, so you can hook these up to a bunch of different types of pipes. Back here, you can hook this up to uh, like conductive pipe, whatever you. Um, want to use, you can use uh, redstone energy conduit, which I uh, probably would recommend. Um, but when you hook up the power to this block in the back, it will turn green. So that's what that does. Um, inside here, or up in this top block here, we have the reactor control rod. And this will be a little bit more important for the actively cooled reactors, um, but I'll show you what it does in just one second. Let's take a look at the inside of the reactor here. There is a lot going on, and luckily, um, a lot of tool tips are included in this mod, so it basically tells you exactly what's going on without me you know, having to waste a lot of time explaining it. Um, on the bottom here, you can uh, set a few different options, and here's where you activate or deactivate the reactor. And Right now, I'm activated, and you can see that all the stats are up. If it was deactivated, um, the heat would drop down. This is going to stay the same because my power is not going anywhere. Um, but if I were to activate the reactor, we can see... Um, that I have a certain amount of heat, a certain amount of uh, RF per tick, and that's redstone flux per tick, and that's the power that we're getting from this reactor. We have a, uh, a fuel burn-up rate, and it's uh, 0.25 millibuckets per tick. It's burning this uh, Eulorium at, and we have the uh, fuel reactivity, which is how heavily irradiated the core is. And it will basically tell you um, what impact each of these has on your reactor's power, um, fuel consumption, and uh, fuel burn-up rate. So we're putting out 230 RF per tick. I believe that's 23 MJ per tick. Don't quote me on that. Um, and we can see here um, a bunch more stats. Let me just knock something in here. There we go, so we can see it. We have core fuel status, and it will give us a bunch of different information. Um, there is only one Eulorium fuel rod in this reactor, because that's all that you can fit in the middle of a 3x3. And it will tell you that we only have one fuel rod. And it will tell you the capacity of that fuel rod. So 4 ingots per rod, I believe. Um, you'll see that the bottom part of this is blue and the top part is yellow. That stands for cyanite and eulorium. The cyanite is effectively the waste generated by the reactor, which is this right here. And as that fills up, you will slowly create waste and it will get thrown into the outlet mode here, or the outlet side of your reactor access port. Okay, and we're going to need that cyanite a little bit later on. Um, we have our core heat. And again, um, these tooltips are very self-explanatory. tells you what's going on. Um, the relationship between how hot your reactor is, how hot the core is, how irradiated it is, will have a direct effect on how much flux you produce. And uh, simply playing with a lot of these different things will give you a good idea of uh, where your power can be at. Now, we have a full uh, energy buffer over here, and there's a bunch of different ways um, that we can uh, monitor the energy output of this reactor. Um, the main one being, um, let's say, ComputerCraft and RedNet, um, which I won't go into very much. However, um, if you are producing more energy than you're, you're using, there's no point in really burning up fuel. And that's where this uh, reactor control rod comes in handy. It will tell you the uh, fuel heat inside of your reactor. And if we raise this to, let's say, 50%, we'll notice a direct impact. We're going to get casing heat is going to lower. The core heat is going to lower. We're going to get significantly less flux per tick. However, the fuel burn-up rate is going down significantly. So it's not using nearly as much fuel as it would, and we're still getting... Um, 115 RF per tick. So you can kind of configure this to whatever your power needs are, and you can configure these reactor control rods up here. Zero percent being they're basically free range, burn it up. All right. Here's a reactor um, with a few more uh, parts on it. Actually, uh, all the same parts, just in uh, different places. Um, you can see here in the middle that uh, that's your Eulorium fuel rod, and we have three of those. And if we go ahead and look here in the center. Um, ba -da -ba -ba, capacity 1200, so that's 4000 MB per tick, just like we just found out. And we have one fuel rod. Now that is one um, continuous fuel rod. You can add more than one fuel rod, and we will see that in a minute. You can add more than one fuel rod to your reactors, um, depending on whatever your design is. Okay, so here's a reactor. It's offline right now. Let's turn it on. It's a little bit bigger. 
we have three fuel rods instead of one. We're up at uh, about 2056 heat, something like that. And now we're putting out about the same in redstone flux. And you can see that our burn up rate is uh, significantly higher than the last reactor. And that's because our heat is much higher, okay? And that tooltip basically says it all right there. Very, very, very simple. Um, so there we go. There is a reactor. Now there's one more thing that we can do to these reactors, and that's we can, that is we can put uh, different types of fluids inside of them to uh, decrease the heat of the core, okay? And we want to decrease the heat so we can decrease the um, fuel burn-up rate. So let's check it out. We're at 2048, we're at 556, and 2047, 556. Let's go ahead and add some water to this. And uh, don't be afraid to just break your reactor. Um, it's not going to waste any of your fuel on you. This is only going to get the, uh, the tiniest of, of gains because it's water, and water is just about the worst um, fluid you can use. I mean, you could put a liquid bucket of meat in there, I think, too. That might be worse, actually. Um, but let's go ahead and see what we get. Now we had about 20, 48. Okay. All right, we, the, the change is almost negligible. We got almost no no difference. We're at uh, 2048. We're four less four less degrees, a little bit less flux per tick. Okay, it's not really doing a very good job of cooling. Okay, so we're gonna find out what kinds of uh, liquids you can put inside of your reactor to make the most of it. All right, now I put a bunch of different fluids inside of the reactors, and you can see these reactors are significantly bigger um, than the ones I was just showing you, and they also have five fuel rods on the top. Um, I believe that this is the best des design um, that you can make for these reactors, and you can go even taller on them. This is just how far I chose to go up on them. So let's take a look at the water-cooled reactor over here. Okay, We're at 2,274 degrees, putting out 3,622 redstone flux and let's go ahead and check at this okay we're at way less heat and we're putting out way more um, redstone flux RF per tick so redstone is significantly better than the uh, the water there but now let's take a look at this and this is uh this is fluid elorium and this is at 2284 heat which is very similar to the water only putting out 3760 RF per tick this one's putting out a um, little bit less. Okay, so Eulorium is a little bit better, but definitely, definitely redstone tops them both. Um, next, we're going to look at uh, Resident Ender, and this is at 1,248 heat, putting out 9,056, uh, 57 heat. So let's compare that to redstone. Okay, so it's a uh, it's a little bit hotter over there, but it's producing more power than this than this redstone. Okay, so the Ender is definitely better than the redstone so this is the best so far okay a little bit less heat um, the fuel burn up rate is significantly more um, but let's see on a really hot one here 1.93 this one is 1.38 okay so that's the heat on this one is lower which is why it's burning less fuel than this one which is much higher has a higher core heat okay this last one um, and this stuff is pretty difficult to find and this is gelid cryothium um, this is this stuff is freezing cold. If you drop this on the floor, it's gonna start making icicles and snowmen all over the place. This is, um, as far as I know, the best liquid to put inside of your reactor. And uh, we can see here that we're running 12, uh, about 1250 degrees Celsius, and we're producing 9,800, uh, 9,801, something along those lines, um, redstone flux per tick. Okay, and this is actually switched over to kill killa or whatever it is. Um, I don't know what that is. Anyways, but you can see that it's put, putting out um, a little bit more. We're running at 9,540 here. We're running at 9,800. So we're getting we're getting a, a little bit more bang for our buck with this uh, gelid cryothium. And you can't use the regular liquid stuff. I don't think it just it, ca it makes a mess and it's super flowy. Um, but there we go. We're putting out a huge. Whoops. We're putting out a huge ton of power. I just reset the thing um, from these reactors, and they're fairly easy um, to set up. Right now, again, they don't explode, um, but that may change in the future. Um, but these are the passively cooled reactors. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do with an actively cooled reactor, because it's going to significantly change how these things behave. 
All right, now the difference between these two types of reactors is basically night and day. While the, the making of the reactor itself is basically the same, one block makes all the difference and completely changes. And there's another cool multi-block um, that's added into this mod that looks really great and also makes you um, allows you to get more efficiency out of your fuel use. So the first thing that we're going to need to do before we go ahead and make that is go ahead and make this uh, cyanite reprocessor here. And uh, once you make the reprocessor, you can put it down and it's got a number of different uh, interfaces on it. Let's take a look inside. We have a, a space for water here and it holds 5,000 millibuckets. We have a space here for cyanite, okay, and a space here for, for uh, the resulting ingot, it's uh, plutonium. And that's what we ultimately want out of this cyanite reprocessor. So this is basically taking the waste from your regular reactor and reprocessing it into something that's useful. Now you see I have full power, full water, and this is not doing anything. Well, that's because it's going to take two ingots to make a plutonium ingot. And it's going to take a little while. It's going to knock it over to here. And it's the green. I have the green side set to over here. You can kind of see that. And so that's going to knock it out into um, this chest right here. So it's going to automatically spit it out. And you can go ahead and automate these with, again, a bunch of different mods. Um, I have a, an Oculus accumulator hooked up to the back. And I have the back configured as blue here to accept water. And that's going to go over here. Um, this one, you can see you can just configure this however you want to accept uh, on whatever different side that you want. It's basically the same as the thermal expansion machines. Okay, very easy to do. If you want water on the top, you make it blue. If you want the uh, cyanide to come in on, let's say, this side, you can make this side red. And if you want the uh, plutonium to come out over here, you can make this side green. Okay, so it's a highly configurable block. Uh, very easy to use, just need some power and some water, and you can go ahead and start making some of this plutonium. Now, I think in the beginning of the video I said uh, you couldn't make a passively cooled or an actively cooled reactor without um, this stuff first. I, what I meant was you couldn't make the rotor. I apologize if that confused anybody. Um, you can also uh, go ahead and make a plutonium block with four, nine ingots. All right, so this introduces a whole new um, spread of machines, and uh, you don't actually need these but they are very cool and they do um, get more for your power or more for your eulorium or fuel whatever you want to call it um, what the actively cooled reactor will produce is steam and the steam can be used like like you know I'm sure in uh, railcraft um, steam engines all, all kind of, whatever you can use steam for you can use it so this reactor is going to put out steam instead of power and we'll see that in a minute um, but in order to harness that steam within this mod we're going to need to create a rotor and this rotor rotor is a big awesome multi-block machine and these are the components that we are going to need to make it it's basically the same as a reactor there's a reactor housing or there's a um, excuse me turbine housing turbine glass turbine controller so it has its own controller a right, turbine power port and that's where the power um, is going to be tapped from you don't actually tap any power from the reactor itself when it's passively cooled and i'll explain that and you'll see that in a second we have a fluid port which can be configured um, oh, it's yelling at me because it's too small. To uh, inlet and outlet mode, we have rotor bearing, we have rotor shaft, and we have a rotor blade. Now, all of these items here, and let me go ahead and load up big reactors over here. These are going to require, um, well, this requires uh, some cyanite. But, but, but where's that controller? Okay, this is going to require some plutonium, okay? Not too much, but it will require some plutonium to make, so that's why you need to make the um, a regular passively cooled reactor first. And these turbine housings are just some cyanite in uh, this pattern here with some nether quartz, okay? So you are going to need some byproduct. You're going to need to reprocess a little bit. But uh, before you know it, you'll be able to make this uh, wonderful, awesome turbine thingy here, okay? So grab yourself a bunch of these. Go ahead and make yourself another reactor. And... Uh, you will see that this reactor, instead of RF per tick output, we have a 271 millibucket per tick output. And that is solely because I have, er, where is it, a reactor coolant port attached to these. So let me go ahead and, and grab a reactor coolant port just so you can see what happens when I change this. So if I take out this, okay, and I put in this, bam, the entire interface of this thing changes. So we have the coolant, we have a space for water, and we have a space for steam here. 
and uh, the whole reactor changes. It goes from actively cooled straight to passively cooled. It totally changes the entire block. So that's why I said there's there's a big difference between the two. Now the way you set up your your reactor is in t is exactly the same, but this one block, this reactor coolant port, will make all the difference between whether your reactor is classified as a passively or actively cooled reactor. It will take cyanite and uh, excuse me, it'll take eulorium the same way. It will output cyanite the same way, just like your other reactor, except we're going to need these two ports here. Now, this is the turbine, and this is a really awesome block, very cool looking. Anything that's uh, that's animated like this is, is awesome. Um, and it's basically made the same way as um, your reactor casing, but I'm going to go ahead and make one with you really quickly just to show you how it's done. All right, so this machine is going to be a little bit more finicky um, than the actual reactor itself. And I believe you have to make the uh, outsides glass. No, that's not true. I think you can do the same thing. You can use the, uh, the glass and the casings interchangeably. Not a big deal either way. It's just whatever suits your building desires. Okay. We'll just make it all glass, just for starters. Uh, we need some turbine glass. I know this might seem like a waste of time for some of you guys, but sometimes it is helpful to see it built live, just so you know exactly where everything goes, and you can refer back to it in case yours doesn't uh, end up becoming a multi-block in the end. All right, we've got all sides covered, and we're going to add our turbine controller. Uh-oh, didn't make anything. Not the same as this. We're going to need to add a few more things. We're going to need to add this rotor bearing, and it can be it can go on either side. I'm just I just like to put them here. We're going to add a rotor bearing so that our rotor shaft can turn on it. We're going to add a shaft, and it needs to extend the full length of the inside, and this can go vertically as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put on some rotor blades. And you can put on um, a bunch of these. You can put on just a couple of them. It's entirely up to you. I'll show you uh, how to figure out how many you really need in a minute. Okay, and there we go. We completed it, and uh, there is our rotor. Very cool. Now, it is missing one thing, but uh, we will see that in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spawn in one of these creative steam generators just to see, show you how this block actually works. Okay, let's turn this on. Okay, there we go. It's blowing all kinds of steam in there, but it's not turning. And you just saw that one turning over there, so there's clearly something wrong. And what is wrong is that we are missing a, um, a coil. And these, this is, was a little bit confusing when I was reading up on it, but the coils can be made, or conductance coils, whatever you want to call them, um, can be made out of various metal blocks. And I will post a link of a chart that will kind of explain the, um, the efficiencies of these things a little bit better and uh, what different metals you can use and what metals are better than others. I'm just going to use gold for this one. I have actually electrum in my other ones. But basically what you need is, uh, when this ro rotor turbine turns, you need to conduct electricity, and that's what this thing here is for. Um, and it needs to surround the shaft of the, or the turbine rotor shaft, and it needs to be on the opposite end. Okay, so now, if I go ahead and turn this on, we're going to see that our turbine is going to slowly start turning, okay? And it's going to start producing a bunch of RF and this is what we're going to take we're going to use this reactor or we're going to use this power port we're going to load it on here and we're going to put some conduit out of here to actually end up harnessing the power that the reactor um, was giving us in the first place so basically we're just using steam to generate redstone flux okay and you can see that the RPM is rising and uh, we'll check out the uh, internal workings of this in just one minute um, another thing to note is that your coil at the end can be more than um, just one thick. You can actually make it um, go right up to the edge, I think. If I add, let's see. Okay, so if I make the coil too thick, it will still work. Um, it will have a different results. And again, 
Um, you're going to have to check out that, that spreadsheet. It's fairly complicated um, to see what kind of results that you can get from different coils, from different uh, um, numbers of turbine blades, and so on and so forth. But that is how you build the turbine. Okay, so let's run back and over and uh, show you how one works when it's hooked up to an actual reactor. All right, so this is where things tend to get a little bit more complicated, but you guys have already listened to 25 minutes of me yapping my, my head off, so I'm going to try to quick finish this as uh, quickly as possible here. Um, the interface inside of here is a little bit different. As I said before, you have a hot fluid output, and this reactor says that it's actively cooled by a fluid, such as water, which is superheated by the core. And we have the same uh, other interface uh, buttons here, fuel burn-up rate, reactivity, and core temperature. The only other difference is, is the water and the steam output on this side. Now, the best way to find out how big to build your turbine is to first build your reactor and find out how much steam your reactor will pull out. Can't emphasize that enough. It's easiest to figure out what your reactor outputs and then build your turbine based on the output. For every reactor, and there's no way that I could possibly build every single reactor type so I could show you all the different variations of it, but with every different reactor type and with every different reactor setup, say you had two fuel rods in the middle, say you had four, say you had three, whatever it is, the reactor is going to behave different, differently. It's going to, some are going to need more water, some are going to need less water, some are going to output way more um, steam per tick, some of them are going to output way less steam per tick. You just have to get to this number right here. Okay, This is how much steam your reactor is putting out and how much steam your reactor puts out will determine how much um, steam your turbine can handle. So before uh, before I go any further, let me tell you that despite the fact that this huge extra multi-block is a lot of extra resources, the steam turbine or the passively cooled or the actively cooled reactor setup is much more efficient um, on fuel and produces more power than a standard passively cooled reactor. So let me show you that right now. This is a standard one uh, fuel rod reactor, just like that one I have over there. It's full of uh, liquid uh, the cryo cold snowman stuff. And uh, this one is putting out 1,424 RF per tick. Okay, I have the best cooling uh, liquid inside of it. One rod, the rod is set at 0%. Okay, we're getting 1,400 RF per tick. I have the exact same setup. Okay, we have uh, one rod. Well, there it is. You have one rod inside there. The only difference is this is hooked up to the turbine, and the turbine is what is ultimately putting out the power. And the power that I'm getting out of this is 2,083 RF per tick, okay? So you're getting significantly more, uh, about 600 more RF per tick out of the same reactor setup for the same amount of fuel, okay? So these are more efficient. It's just a lot more complicated to build them and a little bit more complicated to understand, that's for sure, okay? Let me show you what's going on here. This reactor um, coolant port right here is sending steam out of the reactor and into the turbine housing, which has a turbine fluid port, okay? So it's coming out of here and into the turbine. Next, I have water coming out of the turbine and back into my reactor, okay? Inside this turbine controller, and let me go over this real quick before I ex try to explain to you what in the world is going on over there. We have a few things that we're going to need to understand. The RPM of the turbine will control how efficient it is. And basically, we control how efficient that it is. Um, a lot of tool tips in here will basically tell you exactly what's going on. Um, you can uh, decrease or increase the flow rate, and this is exactly why that I told you that you should build your reactor first. We have a 271 millibucket per tick output. That is exactly what I'm going to set my turbine control to. Now I can go up on that, I can go down on that, okay? But I want to be basically exactly the same because I don't want it to use more steam, or I don't want to push more steam into the turbine than I actually can produce with the reactor. And you can move these numbers up and down. The default is 2,000. You're just going to have to adjust it based on your needs. Okay. Right here we have the rotor speed, and it's important to note that rotors operate best or most efficiently at 900 or 1800 RPM, and it says that right there. And the 900 mark is basically in the center of this green area here, 
and the 1800 mark is in the center of the green area there. And when you first start up your turbine, it's going to start running very slowly. And it's going to go through this blue area, which is a slower area, or which is going to speed up in the blue area. It's going to slow down in the cyan area, and then it's going to start to pick up around 900 again. After it reaches about 900, maybe 1000, it's going to dip down again, and you're going to start losing power until you get back up here to the 1800 mark, and you're going to start gaining power, okay? So you could run your turbine at about 900 steam and get not quite as much, but almost as much as running it as 1800 RPM. It's basically all what you choose to do, and it's all how you choose to use the steam that uh, that's coming out of your reactor, okay? So right here, this is your 900 mark, and up here is the 1800 mark, and I've got this pretty close to 1700. Um, my reactor can only put out this much. I wish it could put out a little bit more to get on to the uh, 1800 mark, which would make it a little bit more efficient, but I am in the green here, and I am still producing a lot more power than the passively cooled reactor of the same size, okay? So this is a rotor speed, your uh, intake, so this is the steam that's coming from my reactor. Um, and this here is affected by these buttons here, and this is uh, our energy buffer, so it has its own energy buffer, just like the reactor does. If I were to, uh, right now I'm venting overflow only, uh, this steam basically is condensating and turning back into water. So you kind of recycle the water a little bit, and I'm saying that anytime there's extra water, I'm going to shoot it back into my reactor here. And that's what this line here is for. So water out is going back into um, the reactor here. And if I were to say close event, let's see, I don't see a change. I know you can't see a change if I do to vent all exhaust. Okay, that's just going to send all the water straight out. It's going to send it all. There we go. It's disappearing. And it's going right into uh, into that reactor vent overflow only. Okay, so I just want to vent anything that's overflowing. I think that might just dissipate it into the air actually. So this is just uh, recycling the water a little bit, sending it back to the reactor. Um, the water is going to play a really important part in uh, how your reactor functions. So um, this is going to take a little bit while to get back up to speed because we uh, we shot some steam out of it. And uh, while that gets up to speed, let me explain what else is going on here. You can hook your water supply up a number of different ways and uh, depending on the size of your reactor this one's relatively small you're gonna need an absolute ocean worth of water to keep this thing running properly and uh, after a lot of experimentation we've, we um, finally found a happy medium well you can see how fast this is draining and uh, it's only keeping up because my uh, um, extra cells ME stuff is keeping it full but it's using an absolute ton of water and if you don't keep up with the water your steam's going to drop off, your uh, millibuckets per tick is going to is just going to ramp down, and your whole thing is going to collapse, and it's going to be awful, and it's not going to work at all. So, when you make your uh, your passively or your actively cooled reactor, excuse me, you are going to need a lot of water, and I believe water may be the only fluid that you can use at this point, um, or maybe the only reasonable fluid, because I'm not sure how you'd recreate some of the other fluids in mass quantity. Um, but basically, I've got uh, this is this is the extra cells mod. Um, that works great with applied energistics. I've got some aqueous accumulators, some import buses here, um, loading up a ton of water inside of my system here, and I am just simply exporting the water uh, via a fluid export bus through one of these cool reactor coolant ports. Okay, so not only am I getting water from my turbine back into here, I'm also exporting water at about a thousand millibuckets per tick back inside of my reactor and that's why you see this jump here that's that's what's going on here you can use fluid ducts um, but fluid ducts since they are so limited um, are going to require more coolant ports and um, a lot more piping and you can put as many coolant ports as you want on the side of this thing and it might look really ugly um, I chose to use this because it was a lot simpler um, but you are going to need a lot of water inside of this reactor and basically that is entirely how it works okay so you have your uh, your output here in steam you're sending your steam to your rotor the rotor is using that steam um, to make power just like uh, some other mods do and uh, that's what we're getting so these are a lot more efficient I really hope this was this was understandable I, I hope you guys understand what's going on here um, you just use water inside you need to fill your reactor with water and your turbine with steam and you can't run out of water here Otherwise, your turbine is going to slow down, and it's going to be a disaster. And as you can see, we're ramping back up here. 
All right, so that's what these things uh, that's what these things are. Now, one last thing: um, the amount of blades, the turbine blades. You see in there that I have 11. There's three on that very first rung, and then there's uh, oh, there's it's five long, two on each side, plus a third in there. And I got 11 because basically I took the 271 and I divided it by t 25. Excuse me. So. Um, something to keep in mind, the more rotor blades that you have, the more drag it's going to create. If you take the steam in millibuckets divided by 25, it will let you know approximately how many rotor blades you'll need to maximize the efficiency of your turbine. And again, you should find out how much steam your reactor can put out the f first uh, before you, you even create this thing, so you know. So in reality, this could be a lot smaller because I could fit up to uh, four turbine blades per uh, per turbine uh, shaft there. Um, this just looks a little bit cooler so you can kind of see what's going on. Got my uh, electrum block coil down there that's putting out a little bit more um, than some other metals would. And uh, that's the turbine. All right. I hope that was self-explanatory or I hope uh, I explained it well. Excuse me. Here's a turbine that's standing up on end. Basically works the same way. Um, the efficiency and uh, balancing your turbine to get it to exactly where you need it to be is not easy. You're going to have to do a lot of tinkering. Check out that spreadsheet. It's very helpful. The link is in the description. Um, if you're not sure what it means or if you're not sure what's going on and you want to drop us a line, check us out in uh, the IRC chat on the Minecrafters.com. Or you can hit us up on Facebook. There's a lot going on there. Here's a, an example of a double coil um, putting out 4,700. RF per tick, and that's a lot, but it's also consuming um, 709 millibuckets per tick to make this thing go. And uh, finally, you really can make really ginormous rotors. Um, I'm not entirely sure if there's actually a limit. Um, there's a limit to the functionality, that's for sure. This thing is not putting out a lot based on its size. That thing's putting out double. Okay, but you can add, you can make really big rotors, you can uh, make really big coils. Um, whatever works for you, whatever, however much space you have, if you just want to make something like this that looks really awesome, go for it. All right, totally forgot one thing. So real quick, before I go, you can add a reactor RedNet port or a reactor computer port onto either the turbine or your reactor. Um, basically, there's a lot of different options inside of here. If you open up the GUI, um, you can select a whole bunch of different things from here. Um, you can color code it based on your uh, RedNet set up here and I can use this to turn the reactor on and off. You can see over here that's turning on, turning off, and that's just because I'm using the uh, right here, this toggle reactor on and off. You basically just drag these over here and you have to commit to them and then uh, whatever you set uh, your preferences to, that's what you can use. And the computer craft port can be hooked up using the, uh, the wired modem and that's attached to uh, this block right here, the reactor computer port. And now uh, you can set up all sorts of neat programs to automatically turn on and off your reactor, to monitor the heat inside it, to change the, uh, the levels of your uh, reactor control rod, all sorts of neat things. Um, the people that know ComputerCraft and RedNet um, seem to be few and far between uh, based on the regular Minecraft player base, and I don't really know too much about them, so I'm just going to leave them to the imagination of those more brilliant than I am. Um, this is the Big Reactors mod. I hope it has been helpful. Um, and that's it, I believe. Captain Jack signing out.